Good afternoon, everyone. Tractor Man 44 here. I'm going to start on a little project for my son. Uh, he bought a two-story house that's got a really uh, a horrific heating and air conditioning system in it. And we're going to, uh, to gut everything that he's got and then go back with uh, all new properly designed ductwork and everything. So I'm going to start off this afternoon. I've already measured up pretty much 90% of what I need, uh, but enough to get it started where you have uh, heat back within 24 hours or so, you know won't be completed but at least it won't get cold but uh, we're gonna we're gonna make a it's gonna be a pretty pretty drawn out project there's gonna be a lot of metal involved I probably got 100 feet of metal to make I guess I don't know maybe a little less than that um, just for the one system we're gonna end up putting the second system up in the end but anyway we're gonna run the gambit of everything that you normally do to lay out sheet metal I don't know how much anybody really wants to know or anybody really wants to see but uh, it's, it's kind of interesting to me you know but uh, we're going to get to use all kinds of tools, uh, left-hand cuts, right-hand cuts, straight cuts. We're going to use small squares, big squares, uh, straight edges, all kind of stuff. Um, we get to use a four-foot brake, box and pan brake, uh, eight-foot brake. We use a Pittsburgh lock farmer machine. Uh, we use a cleat bender. We're going to get to use a cheek bender. Uh, we're going to get to do a lot of stuff. And that'll all be explained uh, if anybody's really interested. Uh, that'll be explained, you know, as, as we go along and as we use the different tools. And uh, bear in mind... I'm not a professionally trained sheet metal worker by any, by any stretch. But, uh, but at any rate, I, I, I know enough to where I can hack around good enough to, to, to do a job, you know, like this for my son, my daughter, and all that. Uh, or even myself, actually. <laughs> but uh, his is going to be a pretty involved project. So uh, we're going to just start out today by laying out just some straight duct. Get all the straight duct knocked out first. Uh, get that done. Get that down in his basement, you know. Then we'll go back and make all the transitions and things like that and all the fancy fittings uh, and everything for the wood furnace um, and also uh, for tying the two systems together with the dampers and all that kind. So it's going to be a long drawn out thing, you know. Uh, you can just bear with me or uh, hopefully if you kind of stick around, you might get a chuckle or two, you know. Might get a new wrinkle in your brain. I said we're going to start with a basic straight piece of duct. Um, there's going to be uh, actually six sections of this particular size of duct. So uh, what, what we're going to do, uh, bear in mind I'm not a graphic artist, but uh, if, you, if you just consider drawing a piece of duct, you'll want to draw a box kind of like this right here and uh, just draw an isometric piece of duct. Remember how when you were a kid you just drew those, those really neat boxes and everything, you know? So you just draw like that and connect all the dots and you can make all the dotted stuff in there if you want to. If you uh, go ahead and simulate the duct, you'll go ahead and draw your little drive tabs on them right here and, and all that stuff. We know that we're going to be wanting... Uh, 48 inch material because I bought 48 by 96 by 26 gauge material so I can make four foot or eight foot duct I'm getting too old to hang eight foot duct. I don't like it. So I'm gonna make 48 inch sections It's actually pretty good because it gives you more joint uh, in your run more joints in your run Which makes it stiffer and less apt to oil can but at any rate if this is your basic duct here It can be any dimension at all, but for uh, for for figuring out our cut sizes on the very first set of ducts we're going to uh, lay out. We're going to go ahead and put our dimensions on here of 8 inches in height at 8 inches in height by 16 in width. So typically you would call this 16 by 8 because they always go the, uh, the width before the height. So we start off by adding 16 plus 8 plus what the lock farmer machine. So what's 16 late? That's 24, right? All right, the lock farmer machine takes up one inch. That Pittsburgh cleat farming or lock farming machine. So we have to add one inch for the lock farmer. And then that lock farmer joint has to have a quarter inch on the opposing half, the opposing side of that duct to, to drive down into that Pittsburgh groove. So you have to add a quarter. So our cut size is going to be 24 plus one is 25 plus a quarter. So our cut size is going to be 25 and one quarter by 48 inches. Now I told you I had six sections of that particular size duct on this portion of the duct uh, system. So I'm going to lay out 12 25 and a quarter inch pieces by 48 inches long. If you have any desire to make um, anywhere near uh, nice looking sheet metal work, don't ever use a magic marker to lay out. A uh, magic marker, um, oh you can use those fine tip markers but they're still um, allow you to be tremendously in inaccurate. Uh, with your layout. Uh, I insist on using a scratch all or in this particular case an ice pick and uh, sorry about the glare but that's there for my benefit. 
uh, with that ice pick, I put that, uh, that bulb on the back side so I can see my line whenever I'm marking and whenever I'm cutting. There's the first three of the 12 required for this particular size of duct. I'm gonna lay out half of this. I, got, I went ahead and cut six um, raw sheets and uh, because it's much easier to do six at a time instead of 12 at a time. But I'm gonna show you how we notch and everything for folding the duct. Now you don't wanna notch everything with a ruler and a, or a tape measure and, and your awl because it's just so time consuming. So what you wanna do, or at least wanna consider doing, if you could find a scrap piece of, of stainless steel, light gauge stainless steel, you can just make you a, and you can buy these things. Um, of course, they don't look anything like this. But what I do is I take a piece of scrap stainless steel that'll hold an edge, of course, and uh, I'll put a quarter inch notch at an angle, a quarter, a half, a three quarter, a one inch, and then for the occasional three eighths, also a three eighths into the side. And that's going to become my scribes whenever I need to mark a quarter inch off of the edge or a half inch off the edge, one inch or a three quarter. All right, now whenever you're laying the, uh, the height of the duct, uh, eight inch the layout is going to be nine because you have to have that one extra inch to uh, to go through the Pittsburgh machine now what you do you don't want to measure every single one of them uh, with a tape measure or tape measure or a ruler just like I said about the uh, the notches you're going to see here in a minute so just grab any old scrap piece of wood I just happen to have a piece of aromatic red cedar sitting over there by the saw um, by a table saw so just cut you down about a half inch square and then just drill you a hole you know, like right here, one end, doesn't really matter, just in from the end a little bit. And then measure in, if you're making eight inch duct, measure in nine inches and uh, take a finish nail and drill you just a tiny hole with a, a finish nail, you know, on a drill press or hand drill or whatever. Then take eighth inch pop rivets, go to your belt sander if you're lucky enough to have one and sand those down to just sharp little points, just sharp as, a, as, as you can get, like an ice pick or whatever, and drive those right through those holes. Now you've got an, an, a nine inch scribe that you can rest right against the edge of the metal on and then swing this other side right here and you'll end up making a mark nine inches in from the outside edge, which is where that first notch needs to be. Uh, you're gonna see that here in just a second, how that functions. Um, and like I said, whenever, just use pop rivets because that's a steel pin in those pop rivets, you know, usually. Uh, some of them are aluminum, but use a steel one and uh, grind it to a point and when they get dull either drive it out and drive it or you know regrind it or um, or grab a new pop rivet and grind a point on it and uh, go with that but hey man quick and simple man streamline the process the two ends of the duck have to have a one inch uh, scribe on it because of the s clips that attach the ducts together or the they slip into uh, so you're going to have to have a a one inch um, mark on both ends of the duck and up the sides and I'll try to explain that as we uh, as we go along but this is where your scribe comes in for speed so take your one inch no measuring required now we need one inch up here for the Pittsburgh edge Need a quarter inch down here for the quarter inch that goes into the Pittsburgh. Now comes your eight inch mark, which is where your scribe comes in. Put your right up here against the edge and just arc it, arc it, arc it. There you go, half of the Half of the sides are, are ready to notch. Uh, Got to use straight, straight cut and snips. Come into your one inch, cut a bit of an angle.
No end for end, those six pieces do the same thing on the early end, other end. They're ready to cross bake, run through the lock farmer and farm as half pieces of duct. Incidentally, that little handmade nine inch scribe, um, you can make that any, any or drill a series of holes in that one end, you know, like at nine inch, 10 inch, 11 inch, 12 inch, whatever. And uh, as your duct sizes increase in height or, or depth, I guess, and uh, you can use that same one. I, I just make a new one every time or two, you know, because I end up losing them because there ain't nothing but a, a little a little layout as, assistance, you know. But uh, you can see how quick that uh, how quick that goes. Now, when you lay out your cut size pieces, there's there's a variety of ways you can do it. You can use a straight edge. You can measure in your cut size here and up here and line up the two like I did yesterday and uh, and uh, make a straight edge, use your straight edge to make that cut. Or if you have a good accurate four foot square, you can make uh, one mark reasonably close to the middle, like um, there's about, there, there it is about reasonably close to the center of your, uh, your sheet of metal. It just minimizes your uh, your effort, so to speak. And if you go to the middle, you know where to look for your scribe mark whenever you get ready to scribe it. It's important to have a drywall square that's really square, though. You don't want to mark them uh, out of square. Hey, another thing too, a lot of times you don't see, wanna, if you ain't got nothing else, a little WD-40, uh, but a drop of oil, a drop of oil in your snips. Hey, I'm getting old, my eyes ain't what they used to be, you know. We'll go ahead and do three more, then we'll uh, then we'll notch those things out, and then we'll have um, twelve to run through the other machine. Marked and ready to notch. Well, I'm thinking that's going to wrap up the very first part uh, to this series. Um, I have no idea. How far it's going to stretch out. Uh, this is a pretty comprehensive job. Uh, probably have a, a little bit of filming down in his basement too. Maybe a little bit eventually up in the attic when we get on the second system. But um, I think it's a good place to end part one simply because and we showed the basic way of laying out standard straight uh, single dimension ductwork. So um, good place to stop. Tomorrow I'm going to jump on a, a different size duct. Once you get all the different size ducts all fabricated, then we're gonna go about the business as fabricating the transitions. So I'll be showing how I figured that kind of stuff out too. Again, you gotta remember, I'm a little bit rusty on this. I ain't done this in to any extent in years and years and years. And I never really was a trained. I've never had formal training at all. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, I make a lot of mistakes. You know, I say that all the time. Because man, oh man, I sure ain't perfect. But uh, one thing I like is I like straight and I like pretty duct work and I like it to be reasonably accurate. Now, you know, there's some play in all of this. Everything you do, you know, welders know how much gap they can fill. You know, tenors know how much gap they can fill. Uh, you know, but there are just some things that, that just ain't coverable. And that system he's got over there now is just such a horrible, horrible system. Um, just doesn't work. Just doesn't work. And we're going to fix that. If not, he's going to spend a whole lot of money for nothing. But hey, what the heck? It's his money. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna we're gonna make it work. Guarantee you. Like I say, I think we're gonna call that the end of part one. And um, like I always say, man, this is Rackman 44, and I am out of here.